Hey people, Anthony for Before Diesel. We're going to discuss specifically what is an acceptable coolant temperature and why for these 1KD FTVs. And this information is probably relevant for lots of engines when you look up what the normal operating temperature is or base it off averages when you know what a lot of them um, run at. We're going to show you some different ways you can monitor that coolant temperature, discuss those, tell you what, uh, what it should be, what things normally are and what the normal range is when you could probably think you've got a bit of a problem and it's time to start looking around and try and work out what it is. So specifically, 100% Toyota engineers, when they design this engine and put this thermostat in it, this is a thermostat in case you didn't know, <coughs> specifically they said the normal operating temperature of this engine is 75 to 90 degrees. Now that's what they said. Now. A couple of things happen, they engineer things, they design things, and they have a plan for things, and sometimes it's not exactly what they meant, or they, whoever wrote the book, there's a bit of translation issues where it says 75 to 90. So anyway, basically if it was running a bit cold, it wouldn't matter if it was, so that's the range they designed it for, 75 to 90, it's as simple as that. Now, if we take a look at this thermostat, there's a problem with this thermostat, we'll get to that maybe later in the video, but see it says 82 degrees C, Celsius, right? So that one's 82. These are going to say the same thing because they all came out of a 1KD. What does that say? 82. Stay there. Stay there. All right. And, of course, you know what this one's going to say? 82. Only reason one of them got replaced was because the engine was getting replaced. Another one I don't know. And this one was one that was stuck open. So you can see the airspace through the middle there. That is a problem. That's going to cause it to run cool. We, ex we explained that in another video. But we'll explain it again. I've been specifically asked to do this video so that's what i'm doing so they've told us 75 to 90. we can see the thermostat says 82 and i can tell you from looking at thousands of 1kds from their coolant temperature on the scan tool okay you know the diagnostic scan tool in the workshop the two scan tools we use it tells us that at idle when everything's normal it idles at 83 degrees, okay? So the difference between where the thermostat is, the coolant temperature, and where the coolant temperature sensor is, is about one degree, okay? So that worked out pretty well, because they said 82, it's only one degree difference. Now, the way it works is you drive the vehicle, it's gonna get hotter than that. You're putting it under load. The engine to make that power and torque, it's the heat of compression, it's the combustion, it makes heat in the engine, and that's why the coolant's there to cool it down. All right, let's do it the simple way. Let's talk about temperatures below 80, 83 first. Okay, now they said 75 to 90. Thermostat says 82. We know it idles at 83 looking at our scan tool. For example, this one here, we've got the scan gauge here. That's something that we use in, we use a scan gauge two in two of the vehicles. Scan gauge three, always plugged in because everybody knows the temperature gauge doesn't work. It comes up to the normal range and it doesn't matter if it's 80, 85, 90, there's no movement. You don't know what the temperature is. So you should, if you want to look after your engine, have something like this to monitor your engine coolant temperatures and other things as well. But the engine coolant temperature is probably one of the most important ones. Okay, so the only time it's going to be under 83 is when it's warming up. So if you have, watch your scan gauge, your scan tool, your auto fix 3210, whatever you've got to watch that coolant temperature that's accurate, which most scan tools I've ever used, all give you an accurate reading on the coolant and you can confirm that by seeing it idling at 83. If it's not idling at 83, one of two problems, your scan tool's not right or you've got a problem with your thermostat, which is very rare. I've got to say it's super rare. I'm not going to go into too much detail of when to replace the thermostat or how to do that in this video. It's more about what's acceptable. So I hope you can understand at the moment, even though they said 75 to 90 on this engine, you're not going to see 75, 78, 79, 80, 81, any of that means the thermostat's stuck open. Anything below 83, if it's not getting up, look, in really cold temperatures idling, it's gonna take a long time to get there. So go for a drive, that'll get warmed up, come back and let it idle. It shouldn't go below 83, maybe 82, 81 momentarily. Otherwise, this is stuck open, there's too much flow, and the engine's gonna start cooling down again, okay? So that's helping you diagnose a problem. So we've got it clear. 75 to 90, even though they said that, thermostat said 83, so at the end of the day, you're not going to see anything under about 83, other than a degree or two momentarily, unless you've got a problem. Now, now that we've got the under 83 nailed, let's talk about the over 83. 
83 degrees, okay? You start driving the vehicle, it's gonna go 84. When you're driving, the normal temps you're gonna see, and when I say this, it's from, we drive two 1KDs and a 1GD, and they're all very similar on temperature, I can tell you. So the, this is relevant for the 1GD also. It's all pretty much gonna be the same. I haven't had a thermostat out, looked at it, and looked at the number on it, 82, like this one or not. But I can tell you, it idles at uh, 83 and pretty much runs at the same temperatures. You do the same conditions to it, you load it up, it heats up the same. Now, this is the most important part of the video. Above 83, up to 90, let's talk about what conditions. Now, a standard vehicle is gonna stay cooler than one with a bull bar, cooler than one with a winch, cooler than one with driving lights, all these lights and, um, you know, light bars, um, people that have got a fly screen in front of the grill and other modifications, maybe auto coolers, um, maybe DC, DC chargers. What are the other things that block the cooling system that I've forgotten? Bull bars, winches, anybody else put it in the comments. You know what I mean? All the sorts of things that block the flow to the cooling system. Possibly, a, yeah, the mesh, yeah, the fly screen, all the sort of things they put there. That reduces the flow. That's not going to help things. It's going to stop the bugs going in there, yes. And in some circumstances, you need to do things like that in certain areas temporarily and you probably need to drive at reduced speeds and take care because you're not you've you've modified and reduced the effectiveness of your cooling system we've talked about the cooling system in many videos um yep the driving lights and all that yep all that stuff it all adds together now even bull bars because they block a lot of the flow and that flat plate underneath um so look at the end of the day take that into consideration but generally when you're driving these vehicles they're going to run at about, most people would agree they see 85, 86 degrees on their scan gauge or whatever they've got there. Um, normal driving, so decelerating down a hill, it will go as low as going back to 83 degrees because there's no load. So if you look at the load reading on your scan gauge, not only are you looking at your injector condition at idle only, obviously at idle, but when you're driving, the higher the load, just think of that as simple as that is, a load on the engine. The more load there is on the engine, the more temperature you're going to have both EGTs exhaust gas temps which you won't see on this most likely particularly on a 1kd you can see EGTs on the scan gauge 3 the next model up you know the one with a color touch screen it's about this big we've got it in other videos check out that playlist you know scan tools and stuff like that if you want to work out which one to have because I've said it before everybody should have something to monitor these temperatures to cl scan cl and clear codes because the code gives you a good direction to what's wrong with the vehicle. You've got no idea where to look without a code. We can't help you. It's all about having a code. Don't bother replacing your thermostat. We've talked about that. Search our videos thermostat. Now, so they set up to 90. So I'll back them up and I'll say, to be quite honest, in my vehicles, the 1KDs, rarely do I see 90. Let's go to the 120 products. I've done over a couple hundred thousand Ks in that in the last few years, in the last less than 10 years. So I've got a lot of experience. I've seen it out on the tracks. I've seen it out on the deserts. I've seen it on beaches. I've seen it towing, not towing. I've seen it in 45 degree heat. I've seen it in the cold. Wind. I've seen the whole everything. And to my memory, there's probably only been a handful of occasions I've ever seen it over 90 degrees. Okay, it's got an ARB bull bar. It's got a light bar there. It's got a K-on underneath the front of the ARB bull bar. There's a K-on there's a plate there that I've replaced the ARB plate with a cone. It's got some extra holes for airflow, right? So airflow is everything. The number plate, if I'm in hot conditions, I even uh, move the number plate out of the way of that gap in the ARB because it's designed to have air to go in there, but half of it's blocked with the number plate. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go camera to there and show you. Go and have a look at the front of an ARB bulla. You'll see a slot cut through the middle, and then you'll see the standard number plate mounting points. Um, usually goes below that, and it blocks over the winch but you can also mount the bottom of the number plate, blocking the hole of the airflow to the radiator, which I don't mind that. On our 120, it still stays under 90. So most commonly we'll see 85, 86 as you normal in your cooler climates. If it's a bit warmer or you're working a little bit harder, you're gonna easily see 87 or 88. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? You think this video is taking a bit long? Well, that's because I've done it before. People missed it or whatever the case. So I'm gonna keep saying it again and again to get it into your heads, this is the information, and I'm not doing it again, okay? This is it. So stay tuned. 87 to 88 is going to be quite common. If you're up in Queensland, Northern Territory, WA, up in these hotter climates, you're even going to see 88, 89 all the time. You're going to see 90 all the time. Now, 
The Hilux is a bit different. The radiator, the cooling system is a bit smaller. And I've got to tell you, and that's why we own a Hilux as well, because I wouldn't know to tell you, because road testing vehicles, looking on the scan tool and all of that doesn't teach me and allow me to know what I know by owning the vehicle, driving it hundreds of kilometres, thousands of kilometres, on highway runs, on short trips. I need to do that to really get to know the vehicles and understanding the vehicles and using them in those sort of tests gets me fully educated to share the info for you guys. What I'm getting at is the Hilux, once again with just an ARB bull bar, no light bar, it's got a winch there, but it didn't really matter. Even before the winch, nothing changed. Quite regularly, we'll see 90, 91, okay? So when we're on the 100, 110 zones, it's got less torque, it's a detuned engine compared to the Prado. So it's working a bit harder to maintain those 110-ish, let's say 110-ish type highway speeds, up slight hills and all that. And quite regularly, other than in the cold weather, other than in the cold weather, right? That means in the cold weather, it stays pretty cool, 88, whatever, not too bad. But it'll easily, once it warms up a little bit, be seen around 91, 92 degrees. I don't like it. When I see that, I want to back it off. I want to slow down. And that's what I do when I let it cool down because I remember what Toyota, the engine design, the manufacturer, the engineers said, 75 to 90. So I don't like much over 90 at all whatsoever. Okay, so when I see by watching on my scan gauges, 90, I don't have a panic attack and go, oh no, it's 91, it's 92, quick, pull over, stop the vehicle. And that will cool it down. Sitting there idling, it'll come back to 83. What's happening is the engine is working harder than the cooling system's capacity to cool it down to 83, right? So the thermostat here, it's fully open. The, the coolant's flowing. Everything's in peak condition. It's got airflow but it just hasn't got the efficiency there to take the heat out as fast as what it's being made. So the way you help that is you reduce the load on the engine, you slow down, or you look at the front of the vehicle and you go, how on heck earth is this supposed to work with all these things in the way? And you just got to get rid of it. You've got to clean it out. You've got to do the BFE job, reverse flush all that dust, bugs, dirt and debris, reverse flush out of the radiator and everything every 150,000 Ks or eight years, whichever comes first. That's a big contributor. You've got to look at what you've put in the way of the flow. You've got to get rid of it. But then apparently there's people talking about 92s, 95s, 100 degrees. If people are driving around 100 degrees, they've got rocks in there. Because I'm telling you now, I own two 1KDs and between the both of them, I have never seen more than to the best of my knowledge ever on either vehicle 92 degrees. Okay, they've both got ARB bull bars, so they're not standard. Now, on the 1GD 2022, it's a smaller engine. It has to work hard. It creates more heat to get the job done. I regularly see it. It's kind of always at 88 or more. It doesn't really run at the 85s or 86s as the 1KDs do. Um, it's up to 90 really easily. It even gets to 92 really easily, right? So it really does get up to 92 degrees. And that's the temperature. It's consistent across the three vehicles, including the other one GD and any others we've driven on the long distance. 92, 92 is the magic top number. Now, some people are going, well, is 95 okay? Is 100 okay? Well, going by the um, engineers. Oh, thanks. You must have known I needed a drink. Cheers. Nice cold one. Thank you. Yeah, I'm talking too much, right? We're going to wrap it up in a minute. So, but people are going, so, but mine goes up to 96. Is that okay? Well, you know, momentarily that'll be okay. But if you run the engine at 96 for a lot of its life, it's running at a hot, it's not just the coolant temp. The coolant temp's got a direct relationship. You can't have hot coolant and cool EGTs. You can't have cool EGTs and, and um, you know, high coolant. It's It goes hand in hand. If the coolant's down, the EGTs are down. If you're working the engine, you get higher EGTs, you get higher coolant. And I would suggest that if you're got above about 90 degrees, much over it, then your EGTs are higher than the design idea as well. It doesn't mean, oh, it happened once and your engine's gonna blow up, you're gonna crack a piston or blow a head gasket, or it's gonna, it's not necessarily overheating, but it is. If it's over 90, technically it's overheating because they said 75 to 90, right? So what's acceptable? On my vehicles, 90 is perfectly acceptable. 91, 92, that's where I start thinking about it. I've never seen any higher than 92 on any of our Prados or Hiluxes. So I can't help you with that. And I don't understand any reason why any vehicle would have to be 
93, 95 or 100 or 104, 110, you are certainly pushing it. I think the engines are strong, the gaskets are good. You're probably not gonna to have too many problems, but it is gonna reduce the life, the longevity of the engine. That's the only way it can go. So I've finished talking now. Go and grab yourself a beer because I'm gonna finish this. And scan gauge, if you need one, AZ Scanners in Australia is one of the leading um, suppliers of diagnostic scan tools and scan gauges, that sort of thing. You can monitor the coolant temp. You can also monitor the transmission temperatures in a lot of vehicles. You may have to do some work and add in those codes, but this works on our 2013 Hilux four-speed auto. It works on our 2008 120 Prado five-speed auto. It works on the 1GDs, but we're currently running the um, scan gauge three with a big color screen with a nine um, output display. And I feel quite comfortable knowing what the temperature things, how things are running, what the load's at. When I stop at the lights, I can see the load. You can just see where everything's normal, but that's my that's my problem. That's my mechanical problem needing to do that. I suppose when you're traveling, you want to know that everything's okay. If we get an engine light, we can easily quickly scan it, see what the code is. We know what it is, what it's related to. We can clear it and get rid of it, or we can know where to look to go and do some rectification if there's any issues. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked it. I hope that explained everything in full detail. That's what I wanted to do. And I've talked like crazy, so I hope you liked it. I better get some... Uh... Hey, if you want to send me gifts, just send me a text message if you want to send me a gift and I'll let you know where to um, put it. You know, I'll send you the BSB and account number. And, you know, if you send enough gifts, you know, there's always... Fa then we're friends and there's favours and all sorts of things go on. But some people just reckon they love the videos and they would like to send me a reward or a gift. So let's call it a gift because gifts are gifts and you love me and I love you and gifts are good and happy days. Thanks for watching. Bada bing. Catch you later. See ya. Hope you like that. These gifts, they're not really my gifts. They're his gifts. He just gave it to me as a gift and I'm just going to receive the gift in uh, thank you very much and let's drink it. See ya.